Hi, welcome to Better Than Yourself. Today on Better Than Yourself, condiments. I'm gonna make some condiments. I'm gonna do uh, mayonnaise, mustard, and some ketchup. Oh, well, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, God, John, you're not gonna ferment mayonnaise, are you? No, don't worry. I don't ferment everything that I cook. Well, actually, I'm gonna ferment the ketchup because, you know, ketchup's got way too much sugar in it, so we're gonna make a fermented ketchup that's a pretty strong departure from what you're used to tasting from the the ketchup people. So we'll see that in a minute. But let's do, uh, we'll do three condiments and they're super simple to make. Uh, you're gonna need like some kind of a blender, a stick blender, something like that, a Cuisinart, nothing fancy yet with these recipes. The mustard we're gonna have to soak overnight and then we can blend it up tomorrow morning. And the mayonnaise you can pretty much do on the spot when you're, when you're making sandwiches and it'll be your go-to mayonnaise recipe and you'll probably not buy that other stuff with the blue lid anymore. So here, let's get started. Enough talk, let's get started on our ketchup. I made this a couple of times and it really comes out nice. All right, let's take a look at what goes into the fermented ketchup. Mostly our prime ingredient is gonna be tomato paste. The, um, yeah, you can use fresh tomatoes and boil them down, but then to get the tomatoes into something like tomato paste, tomato paste is one of the few things that I buy from the supermarket. I really, I can't do tomato paste better myself, sorry. I accept the defeat. But when you buy it, look for organic. This is getting really easy to find now. Organic tomato paste, flip it over, check the ingredients. One ingredient, tomatoes, awesome. So two cans, we're gonna use 12 ounces of tomato paste. We're gonna use a quarter of a cup of honey. We're gonna use a couple of cloves of garlic. This is fermented garlic. That fermented garlic video is awesome. Make your own fermented garlic. I'm just gonna use a little bit of that. You can use fresh garlic, of course. And, uh, about a teaspoon of salt, and then we're gonna do a cup of pickle juice. These are fermented pickles. These, this isn't, you know, commercial, you know, buy them at the supermarket pickles. This, these are fermented, so this says, I've got lots of probiotics in here. This is the culture that's going to actually ferment the honey and the sugar that's in the tomatoes and make the vinegar that's gonna make this taste like a condiment. So that's kind of the trick. Yeah, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of sour in this, but we're not really using that much. What we're counting on is for the bacteria in the pickle juice to ferment this stuff. And that's what's gonna give us the, the acid taste and make this into a good condiment. So, super simple to make. Let's get this stuff into the, uh, the sticky stuff into the jar and I'll uh, be right back with you. Okay, so get your honey and your tomato paste in the jar. Gonna do a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna do some of our awesome fermented garlic. Like I said, you can go ahead and just use regular garlic if you don't have fermented garlic. And then we're just gonna grab a quarter of a cup of pickle juice here of that. This is our, this is our culture. If you don't have this, maybe you might have some whey. You could strain out of some yogurt. Buy a cup of yogurt, of organic yogurt in the market and strain it overnight and strain off some of the, the liquid in that, in the yogurt and make yourself some Greek yogurt. But that liquid that you reserve is whey. I don't really care for dairy products, so I don't eat whey. But I just make my own. I, somehow or another, you need to add the culture to this. You need to find your, uh, one of your ferments has some juice you can add. And then our final ingredient actually has a shaker top. About that much hot pepper. And then go into it with a stick blender. And be on the standby with some water. We need to thin it out. Maybe we could add a little bit more pickle juice. Gives it a nice flavor and gives it a great kickstart. And mostly we're trying to grind that garlic up. Good tomato paste. Definitely not thin tomato paste at all. Touch more. What well, I'm just I'm watching it and I'm looking for the consistency of ketchup. You, know, you want something that's pourable, squeezable goodness. And I think we're there. Yep, 
Yeah, that's a nice ketchup consistency. So I think I must have added probably actually a full cup of pick uh, between the water and the pickle juice probably about almost a cup it took to get us down to a nice consistency here. It's what you get for buying high quality tomato paste. Awesome. I'm here just kind of clean up the mess. Once you got your jar cleaned off, you can go with one of these uh, plastic caps. And grab yourself a box of these, are real nice. Instead of using, I've seen a lot of people with the old metal um, canning tops, two piece canning tops, screw one of these on. I don't like that much metal around this much tomato acid um, and in my ferments, so I grab these uh, ball plastic storage caps and they work great. You just put that on there, not too tight. You know, this is fermenting, so you can let it just kind of loose and the, as the carbon dioxide is created by the, by the fermenting ketchup, it can get out. Uh, another way you can go is with something like this. This is um, uh, made by Mason Top Company, and they basically just replace the the metal uh, canning top, but they're still held in place with the the metal band. The metal band doesn't touch the the tomatoes at all, so it's not a problem. You know, you get glass here, and these are these are silicone pickle pipes. So you can just screw that right down over your pickle pipe. And there's a little, little tiny hole here that's gonna let the gas vent out. So this is ready. This is, uh, this is gonna ferment for, I would taste it after a week and see how it's doing, make sure it's, it's fermenting, but probably a couple of weeks. But again, like any of your other ferments, just you know, taste it every, every so often and see how it's coming along. You know, check it for mold, check it for any problems. If there's any mold in it, if there's anything bad happening, scrape that out as soon as you see it and ditch it. You know, use a clean spoon, use always, you know, nothing too cruddy and in going into your ferment jars, but they'll pretty much take care of themselves. You don't need to worry about anything that, that happens in there. So just find a nice, uh, a nice warm, dark cupboard for this and this will be ready probably in a couple of weeks. We'll start with the mustard. This we're gonna have to soak overnight, but we can get it set up and We'll stop the camera for a little bit. But we'll start just with uh, dry mustard seeds. I've got a link for these down below. What we're gonna do, your proportions are double the amount of liquid to the amount of mustard seeds that you use. I'm using yellow mustard seeds. They're a little bit more mild than the, the, the brown or the black mustard seeds. And so this will come out with a, a little bit uh, kind of a sweeter mustard. What we're gonna do is a half a cup of mustard seeds and if you recognize the apple cider vinegar I'm using here, this is where a lot of the taste is gonna come from. Yeah, you can use commercial vinegar from the supermarket, get some you know, white vinegar in there, and it's gonna taste like you put acetic acid in it. So, not a big fan. Watch the, uh, watch the cider making video and, and learn how to make some apple cider vinegar. So here's my uh, homemade apple cider vinegar, and you can, like I said, about um, half the seeds to the volume of liquid that you use. So a little bit uh, more amendments. We're gonna do half teaspoon of salt. And if you like your mustard real yellow, this is the magic here, turmeric. We're gonna do a full teaspoon of, of turmeric. This is, it's kind of like ginger. It's, it grows the same way, grows in pretty much all the same places. But we're gonna use it just because it's gonna give us a nice bright yellow color, as you can start to see in the jar already. If you don't have apple cider vinegar and you wanna substitute, maybe you can use half a cup of just white vinegar, but then maybe a nice dry white wine and that will give you your full cup. So you have a half a cup of commercial vinegar and then a half a cup of white wine. Use all white wine. Uh, use a cup of beer. Use a cup of beer with a half a cup of seeds. Whatever you like, whatever you got on hand, experiment. Seeds are cheap. See what works well for you. But this is ready. We're gonna let this sit overnight. We'll take a look at this in just a little bit. All right, so this has been soaking overnight and you can see that the Mustard seeds have completely expanded to right up to the level of the vinegar. You can see a little bit of turmeric in there sort of floating around. That'll all mix right in. But, like I said, this is super easy. Just, again, hit with the stick blender.
This is something you can do in your Vitamix, you can do it in a blender. I just like using the stick blender just because, I mean, it's nice. This comes off, this goes in the dishwasher, I'm done. All right, now for the mayonnaise. For your oil, we're gonna use a cup of oil. You can use, this is olive oil, this is extra virgin olive oil. This, you can use this, this'll taste really good, it's really good for you, but it's gonna be really strong, I think. So, I don't know if you, if you really wanna do this with, with extra virgin olive oil, try it sometime, and uh, see if you like it, you might love it. You, if you're a big olive oil aficionado, this might be your olive oil mayonnaise. I think this is a little strong tasting. I'm gonna go with just a just a regular olive oil. You might want to look for something like uh, avocado oil. This is getting real popular in the markets. I've seen this a couple different places. And finally, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is our third condiment on the list today that we're making. So it, mayonnaise is super quick to make. You just uh, like again, we're gonna be using our our stick blender to uh, do the mixing of said product. But with a stick blender, you can do it right in a jar, and it's super quick. You need a cup of oil, a little bit of mustard a little bit of lemon juice, an egg, and a little bit of salt. You might want to consider what kind of oil you use. That's really where the bulk of the taste is gonna come from. The, the mustard is really, it's the emulsifying agent, meaning that we're making a, a, a colloid here. We're making an emulsion of egg and oil. And the mustard is the thing that kind of holds that, that glue, kind of keeps it a little bit more stable so it doesn't break and become this oily mess in the fridge when you're not using it. A little bit of uh, lemon juice just to, to cut that oily taste, a little bit of acid to balance out the oil, but we're gonna make an, an emulsion with egg and oil. For your oil choices, this is olive oil, this is extra virgin olive oil, which might be an option. If you like olive oil, it, this is gonna make a real strong olive oil tasting mayonnaise. Uh, try it if you want. I think I'm gonna pass on the extra virgin today and just go with the with the the lighter olive oil. Something I was thinking about maybe might be fun is do some avocado oil. This is getting super easy to find at the markets and real good for you. It's, um, you know, avocados are good for you. Uh, but let's get to work on our mayonnaise. So we've got our oil of choice. Like I said, we're just gonna do half a spoon of, of mustard, maybe not even that. We're gonna do an egg. Yeah, this is a raw egg. The problem with eggs is the shell. The shell is dirty. The contents are clean and, and edible raw. The trick is getting it out of the shell without touching it too much or getting the, the, the shell. So I actually wash this in hot soupy water. Um, you might consider doing the same. And then some salt. And then finally, we're just gonna go in with our stick blender and make mayonnaise. And you can see, in a matter of seconds, we've got mayonnaise. As I mentioned, you can add a little bit of uh, lemon juice to it. It actually gives it a nice taste. Not a lot, you don't want lemon sauce. You just wanna cut that oil taste a little bit. Mix that in. And as you can see, you've got mayonnaise. And it's delicious. Mine needs a little bit more salt. And a hint more juice. Other things you can put in here, maybe a little bit of uh, hot red pepper, maybe some black pepper. You could do some dill and make a nice dill mayonnaise, maybe to, to serve with a little bit of fish or fresh basil, throw it in there, closer to pesto. A Couple of cloves of garlic, make it taste like an aioli. You could do, something that's nice to do with this is um, not just to spread on sandwiches or make potato salad out of it, but you could also slather uh, both sides of a piece of fish put it under the broiler for a little while and or bake a piece of fish with a, just a thin coat of mayonnaise on it and it makes it super succulent because the all that oil really you know binds all the the juices in the in the meat or the fish um, awesome awesome to cook with with mayonnaise 
Another uh, mayonnaise trick from my past, make a grilled cheese sandwich, don't butter the outside of the bread, but instead use mayonnaise and put the whole thing in a toaster oven and bake it. Ho ho! Thanks for watching you guys, I'll see you next time. Uh -huh.